Okay? Yeah. All right, today we're uh, looking at activity series on our handout. And I've written the activity ser series here. So the most reactive elements in our series are on this end, and the least reactive elements are on this end. One good way to memorize it is to make words out of the uh, element symbols. So lithium, potassium, barium, calcium, uh, sodium, magnesium, aluminum, zinc, iron, nickel, tin, lead, hydrogen. Hydrogen is thrown in there, even though it's not a metal, it's thrown in there because there are a lot of acids that will react and release hydrogen. Uh, so they show, they, they've inserted hydrogen in anyway. Then copper, silver, gold, the three coinage metals you'll notice are on the lower end of the re reactivity scale. And it stands to reason that they're used as coinage metals because of their low reactivity, gold being the most uh, the primary example, the least reactive of metals. So one way of memorizing is to make little words out of the uh, element symbols. So lick, makana, magalzin, fini, sn, pb, and then you can memorize the rest because it's the coinage metals. So the third, we're going to start from number three on our sheet. We have iron reacting with sodium nitrate, nitrate in aqueous solution. And we notice that iron is lower on the activity series than sodium. So we get no reaction. Iron is not able to displace sodium. On, on the fourth example, we have iron, but this time it's reacting with lead sulfate. And in this case, iron is higher than um, lead. Lead appears lower on the activity series. So iron is able to displace the lead, and you get elemental lead and iron sulfate forming. In the next equation, we show liquid bromine reacting with sodium chloride. In this case, uh, what we're going to be looking at is at the anion. We're going to look at the anion of the reaction. Bromine, uh, halides reactivity increases as you go towards the top of the periodic table. The most reactive um, halogen is fluorine. The least reactive would be iodine. Acetine is not an issue because it's so radioactive that it's not available in nature. So the uh, reactivity series for halogens is fluorine is more reactive than chlorine, which is more reactive than bromine, which is more reactive than iodine. Fluorine is the most reactive element. So here we look at bromine trying to react with sodium chloride. Uh, chlorine is higher up on the activity series, so you get no reaction. In the next example, we have magnesium reacting with cupric chloride, copper 2 chloride. And in this case, magnesium is higher than copper. So you do get a reaction. And the balancing of the equation is very easy because uh, both magnesium and copper are plus two cations. In the next example, uh, I, I wrote two possibilities. Either the copper forms cuprous nitrate or it forms cupric nitrate. So I gave both examples as a possibility. Usually copper forms a plus two cation. So this is the more likely of the two. Uh, so I'll, I'll focus on that one for now. Copper combines with silver nitrate. Uh, copper is higher up on the activity list. As you see, it precedes silver, so it's more reactive than silver. It's capable of replacing silver, and it does so. It produces cupric nitrate and then elemental silver um, deposits in the reaction. In the next example, we have calcium, a group two metal combining with hydrochloric acid. This, by the way, is a common reaction. Uh, most metals will react with mineral acids to produce hydrogen and a salt. In fact, this was one of the reactions that was used in, in uh, early ballooning, where they would, uh, I think it was they, they used iron and sulfuric acid to produce hydrogen gas necessary to fill the balloon. So hydrogen occurs higher up on the list, sorry, calcium occurs higher up on the list than hydrogen does, so it replaces it as the counter ion for chloride. So you get calcium chloride forming. I forgot to put the um, state, probably aqueous, dissolved in an aqueous solution. And the reaction proceeds with the evolution of hydrogen gas. 
In this example, we have fluorine trying to replace iodine. Fluorine is more reactive, and so it does. And the result is uh, iodine, elemental iodine in solid state, aqueous lithium chloride. This example was in the paper, but we don't have where mercury appears in the, react in the activity series. So I didn't, uh, don't know the answer to that. I'll have to look it up. So we'll, I'll get back to you for that one. Copper with magnesium chloride. Uh, copper appears lower than magnesium, therefore it cannot replace it. There is no reaction as a result. Number 12 is a bit more of a challenge because you now have to balance the equation. You start off with aluminum trying to replace copper. The result is aluminum sulfate. It does succeed. Aluminum is more reactive than copper. So you get the formation of aluminum sulfate and with elemental copper. And you'll notice that it takes uh, two aluminums to combine with three sulfates to form a neutral ionic compound. So we ended up having to put two in front of the aluminum. When you put two in front of the aluminum, it balances the two aluminums here. The three sulfates are balanced by uh, putting a three in front of the copper sulfate, uh, which generates, of course, three coppers. So we put a three in front of the copper. That's how we balance that equation. Lastly, zinc trying to replace lead. And it does because it's higher up on the uh, activity series. And you get zinc nitrate. They're both plus two cations. This was the plumbus, uh, plumbus nitrate, not plumbic nitrate. If it had been plumbic nitrate, then you would have had to write, um, you would have needed two zinc atoms for every one atom of lead. In this case, because they're both plus two, they simply replace each other. And you get elemental lead precipitating out.